So in case you haven't figured it out by now, today we're going to be building a drone. So to start this build off, I'm going to open up this freshly delivered package and I've decided to start by assembling the frame which comes in a package that looks just like this. And we're going to start by taking the bottom plate which looks like this and pressing four of these short screws into the outer holes. Now we're going to take four of the included arms and puzzle them together over these four screws and I had to jam the last arm in because there's very tight tolerances right here. And now we can take this flatter screw and screw it in through the bottom and once we're done it should poke out of the top of the four arms just like that. Now we're going to take the top plate, place it on top, flip the whole thing over, and then we can screw these five screws into the top plate. And I'm doing this really slowly, one screw at a time, kind of alternating so that it's really flat, and I squeeze the arms evenly, just like that. So now we can unpack the motors, there's four of them obviously, and I'm going to be using the shortest of the included motor screws. I'm going to pop two of those through the bottoms of every arm, balance the motor underneath, and screw it down. So here are all four of them done. Now I'm going to push some stack screws through the outer holes in the frame. Now it's time to open up the Mamba all-in-one board that will kind of be the brains and guts of this whole drone. Just cutting up the package right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is slice these gummies down a little bit because they're a little bit too tall. Unfortunately, I cut them just a little bit too much. So I had to cut some even thinner slices to make up for the height. But once we put those slices on and put the board down, we should have a really good amount of clearance to keep it really low profile, but also making sure that none of the components touch the carbon, because that wouldn't be so good. So I'm just cutting my motor wires here. I'm going to measure them, cut them, and then I'm just staggering the other two, just like that. And now we have to pre-tin all of the motor pads on the all-in-one. There's 12 of them, obviously, four motors, three wires per motor. Now we can strip those wires of the motors and then pre-tin them so that they're easier to solder up to the board. So once we've done that to all four motors, we can just solder them in any orientation we want to the board because we can fix the direction of the motors in software if they're spinning the wrong way. So now I'm just tucking the motor wires around the screws so that it looks really pretty. And now we're going to wrap a little bit of electrical tape around each one just to hold it in place. So now I've got to pre-tin some of the pads on the board. We're going to do four on this side, these four right here, and we've got to do five over here, just like that. Now we are going to open up the Crossfire Nano receiver that we're going to be using, and we first have to solder up some wires to this little thing. So I'm just using four of the included wires, just like so, and now we're going to pop on the little antenna, and I'm also routing my wires kind of to the side to keep it really low profile. Now I'm opening up the VTX and it comes with a harness which we're going to be using to wire it all up. So I'm first putting some of the included standoffs onto my board and I'm going to orientate my board so that it's kind of pointing towards the front. And I know a lot of people put it going the other way but my plan is that I'm going to put my capacitor kind of in the back so I prefer to have the VTX facing the other direction and that's up to you though. So now I'm cutting the plug of the harness and I made a little mistake. I was getting a lot of video noise when I first wired it up so I had to redo everything. Uh, but I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it the right way but you might notice a little bit of discontinuity in the video from here on out. Hopefully you don't mind too much. And in my case I had to lengthen some of these wires because I cut them already but I do not think you should have to do that if you do it right the first time. If you do it's no big deal. Just solder them up. The blue one is going to go right here, then we're going to use the red one, then the black one, then the white one, then the yellow one. And then for the Crossfire Nano Receiver, we're going to do black, then red, then white, and then yellow. So hopefully this video, you can pause it and figure out exactly how to wire it. Now I'm just soldering up my capacitor through the battery leads. I've put a little bit of heat shrink so they don't short out. And now I'm just preparing my XT30 connector just putting a little bit of solder in the cup and then melting my wire down into it and then again on the other side and we can finish that off with some heat shrink and now I'm uh, adding a little bit more solder onto the bottoms of the pads right there and I'm measuring out how long my XT30 needs to be just
just a little exacto knife, cutting it to the right length, stripping it, tinning it, obviously, and then we can solder that to the bottoms of these battery pads right here. And we can finish that off with a zip tie, and I also put some Uma grip on my frame just so that I can hold my battery a little more securely. So now it's time I'm going to shorten one of these standoffs in the back just so it sits more flush, screwed into a bolt. And now I am taping the tiny antenna to the bottom of the frame just with some really thin strips of electrical tape in a kind of a crisscross formation. And then one more strip around the top, including the motor wires so that we hold everything together. Now I'm gonna open up the Runcam Nano. And the first thing we have to do is cut these three wires on the VTX harness and then strip them. And then we gotta cut the wires really short on the camera and tin them as well. Um, because the camera doesn't have to go far, so it can be really short. And now I'm just pre-tinning the VTX wires, slipping some heat shrink, and then if you can guess what we're going to do, we're going to solder the camera directly to this in a very easy way, in my opinion. Yellow to yellow, red to red, black to black, pretty self-explanatory. And then we can pop that heat shrink over to finish the soldering for this build. So I know it's a little bit confusing, so I'll do a little bit of review. We've got three wires from the camera going into the VTX. Uh, and then we've got those five wires going to the board. So now we can plug the VTX uh, into the harness, pop it onto the standoffs, and then the camera will hopefully sit on top. But to mount the camera, we've got to modify this little mount right here by flexing the outsides just a little bit so that the camera will have an easier time fitting in. I also decided to cut the, a little bit of plastic out of the corner just so that the mount fits uh, more flush on top of the VTX board. Now I'm just popping the antenna for the VTX on, which is really easy to do. I'm adding a couple more slices of gummy. I know that's kind of my thing. I'm also taping the Crossfire Nano to the top of the VTX, just like so. And now all that is left to do is pop this little camera mount on top. Once we get it lined up, we can flip the whole thing over and screw these three screws up into the camera mount. I'm not using any bolts because the plastic holds it pretty well. So now all we have left to do is twist the camera just a couple times, pop it through the back of the mount, just like that. And then the most satisfying moment of it all, we clip this little antenna into the little holder. Ah, oh, that is so nice. Anyways, now that's all that's left to do is plug in a battery and make sure it all works. And we can see that the VTX lights are on, the all-in-one lights are on, and also the Crossfire Nano lights are on. So everything seems to be working. Now we can pop some props on it so that we can get an accurate estimate of how much it weighs. So on the scales without a battery, it's coming in at 61.8 grams. With a battery, it's coming in at 103.3 grams. So I'm going to do a little bit of Betaflight setup right now. First, I had to flash some new firmware. I'll leave it in the description because it was a little bit hard to come by. First thing we're going to do is make sure that the gyro is oriented in the right direction. Just make sure it's doing everything as expected. We have to turn IRC tramp telemetry on UR2, change the motor direction, 8K, 8K, and then I'm also gonna change it to D-Shot 600 because that's the way we roll. And then I'm also going to change the maximum arming angle to 180 degrees. And then we also need to change the serial protocol to crossfire over here because that's what we're using. So now we can save and reboot on this page and move on to my PID tunings. Now my PIDs are no secret, I just got them off of the website where I bought all my components. Here they are if you're curious. And now we can head over to the receivers tab, make sure that the receiver and the transmitter are all working well. I always have to change my channel map to the TAER1234, and I'm also setting my AUX channel to RSSI, AUX channel 4, like that. Now here are my modes in case you're curious, and we're going to head over to the motors tab, Plug in a battery, take off your props, and make sure all the motors are spinning in the correct way. If they're not, it's really easy. Just head over to the BL Heli suite, click Read Setup, and then whichever motors are spinning the wrong way, just change them to Reversed. In my case, I had to change 3 and 4. Then click Write Setup, and that should get you all sorted. You can just disconnect after that. And that's how easy it is to switch motor directions. And here's my Betaflight. Uh, OSD if you're curious. So that's gonna do it for this build. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for the Maiden.